Public Library. My name is Miss Maribel and I hope you're doing well. Friends, what do you think our theme is for this week? Any ideas? What do you think? If you guess skunk, you're right. Our theme for this week is skunk. Our first book is called The Skunk and it was written by Matt Barnett. When I left my house, there was a skunk on my doorstep. I kept very still. I did not want to startle it, but the skunk did not, did not seem scared. Slowly and carefully, I backed away and started down the street. The skunk started right after me. We walked together a few blocks. I thought it was funny that a skunk and I could be going in the same direction. But after a while, I realized I was being followed. When I sped up, the skunk sped up. When I slowed, the skunk slowed. I took many wild turns, and so did the skunk. I turned to the skunk and asked, what do you want? The skunk didn't answer. The skunk was a skunk. I bought the skunk an apple. I gave him a saucer of milk. I offered him my pocket watch. The skunk did not want any of these things. This was ridiculous. I was wasting my time. I hailed a taxi and sped off down the avenue and the skunk took the next cab. Oh my goodness, the chase. Outside the opera house, I hid behind a shrub. The skunk did not see me crouching there. Success, I bounded up the steps and took my seat. I was relieved to find myself between a lady and a gray old officer. But then of course, skunks can't buy tickets to the opera. The curtain rose and I smiled. In the middle of the first solo, the skunk came trotting down the aisle. He climbed on a lady's gown. He climbed up a lady's gown and took a seat on her head. She did not notice. She was wrapped. Excuse me, ma'am, I said, but there seems to be a skunk on your head. Shh, said the lady. This is my favorite part. So strange and so sad. I had to escape. I excuse myself and hurry out the fire exit. The skunk pursued me across the city. He followed me through the sculpture garden and the cemetery. I could not get away. I ran to the carnival, bought a ticket to the Ferris wheel, and the skunk boarded on the gondola after mine. We rode around in great circles. He was not getting any near, and I wasn't getting any farther. I'll admit, I began to panic. I ran past the wharf and turned down the alley. It was a dead end. The skunk walked towards me. Go away, skunk! I shouted, but the skunk came closer and closer. I lifted a manhole and climbed out the sewer. I hurried underneath the streets. Many times I paused to catch my breath, but not for long. I had to go on. When I came up, I was in a different part of the city. I found a new home, I bought new things, and on my first night when I opened my bedroom door, guess who was waiting there for me? What do you think? Ah, that's a good guess, let's see. Nobody! I threw myself a party, I cooked a large dinner, people brought me gifts. After dessert, during the dancing, I thought about the skunk. What was he doing? Was he looking for me? Was he back in his burrow? Was he following someone else? I left the party to find my skunk. He was not in the alley. He was not in the carnival. He was not beneath the city. I could not find him anywhere. I searched and searched. There was the skunk. I trailed him down the sidewalk, careful to remain hidden. I 
think I will keep an eye on him and make sure he does not follow me again. Now who's following who? <laughs> the end. Yay! All right, my friends. Our next book and last book is called Who Wants a Hug? And it was written by Jeff Mack. Everyone liked Bear, and nobody liked Skunk. Hello there, Skunk, said Bear. Would you like a hug? Why would I want that? asked Skunk. Because hugs are fun, said Bear. They make you feel great. Oh yeah? Well, I'm Skunk, see? And nobody hugs a Skunk. It's okay, said Bear. I'll save you one later. Later? That bear bugs me, growled Skunk. He's always happy and always hugging. I'll fix him. Once Mac with this big stinky fish, and bear will be as huggable as a thousand-year-old rotten mackerel. Hold still, said Skunk. Here it comes. Snap. But then it went, and then here it comes back. Boing. Smack. Right back at Skunk. Poor Skunk, said Bear. You look like you need a hug. A skunk never hugs, cried Skunk. It's okay, said Bear. I'll save you one for later. Later, this bag of stinky, smelly garbage will stop that bear from hugging to the skunk. I'll hang it from this tree branch, and when he walks under it, pow, he'll be covered in stink. Ha 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 ha. Here he comes, said skunk. No! What? Why didn't it fall? Who's holding on to that? Yeah, a bird. No fair, bird, young skunk. Let go of my bag. So, what did he do? Okay. So he did. Pow! Right on skunk. Poor skunk. I know what will make you feel better. Let me guess, said skunk. A hug, said bear. Never, cried skunk. How many times do I have to tell you? Skunks do not hug. It's okay, said Bear. I'll save one for you later. Later, that doesn't skunk huffed. There's only one trick left, a stinky balloon. When this bad boy pops, Bear will smell so bad, no one will ever hug him again. I need a rest said Bear. I think I'll sit right here. That's where the stinky balloon is. Three, two, one. Ah, said Bear. Well, I better get back to work. What? cried Skunk. Why didn't it pop? No fair. was supposed to. He likes the 
hug now. You were right, said Skunk. I love hugs. Can I have another? Ah, uh, another hug, Esper? Yes, 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 said Skunk. Um, well, why don't I just save one for you later? Because Skunk stinks. Later. Aw, said Skunk. He got some clothes pins for his nose so he can't smell at him anymore. The end. Yay! All right, friends. Are you ready for our craft? All right, let's go. Hey, guys. So for this video, what we're going to be making is a skunk puppet. And what you're going to need is a white paper lunch sack. If you have a brown one, that'll work as well. I just like white because it's a blank can canvas, so it takes color much better than brown. But the brown one will work as well. You'll need this skunk puppet template, which I will put a link in the description box to the Google Drive folder where you can get this template and templates from past crafts as well. You'll need two Google eyes, a pom-pom, glue stick, scissors, and black crayon. If you don't have googly eyes, you can draw them on. Same thing with the nose. Um, and I'm choosing to make my uh, color my skunk traditionally black and white, so I have my black crayon. However, you can color your skunk any color you'd like. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to color our template. And since mine is black, I'm going to make the um, backdrop of the tail black, the stripe of the tail white, I'm going to make the um, ears black and then the stripe that runs down its face, I'm going to make it white. So I'm going to go ahead and color. I'm also going to color my paper bag black because my skunk is going to be black. So I'm going to speed through that because it will take a little bit. So um, if you need to pause to finish coloring, go ahead and hit the pause button and then hit play when you're ready to move on to the next step. So let's get to coloring our bag and our templates first. Okie dokie, so there is my uh, skunk bag. I did color both sides just for, um, cause I like to be able to have them still seen in the same color in the back. So I'm gonna do that. And now we are going to cut out our skunk puppet um, template as well. And then after, actually, if you want to too, you can color the back of the ears um, the same color. So when you cut them out, you know, the color can be seen by both from both sides, the back and the front. You just kind of need to lift it a little bit just so you can see where the back side is. So you can make sure you cover that area of um, your ears. So um, I just like doing that because then you can see it from both sides. It's not like one side's colored and one side's not. Um, but that's up to you whether you want to do it that way or not. And then I'm going to do the same with the tail. I'm going to go ahead and color the back side or I think the back side is. Um, and if you're not sure, just go ahead and lift it up a little and then you'll be able to see the shape of the dark line and then just color in that general area. And it doesn't matter if you um, color outside the line because when you cut out um, your tail, it will um, get rid of that extra out of the line color. So it kind of corrects itself. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. I think this is the general vicinity of where my tail is. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut this out just like so. There's not too much cutting involved in here. Um, and what I like to do also to avoid um, these black lines from showing on my, um, on my puppet, I put it this way. I glue it down this side so you can't see the dark lines. And that's kind of like a little trick that I learned that if, you know, because you can't always cut these black lines um, evenly. Sometimes, you know, one side is thicker than the other. So what I tend to do is I just flip it the other way so nobody can see the lines. 
and then that makes it nicer makes it look cleaner but um that's a personal preference if you guys don't want to do it that way and you prefer to see the lines you can leave it line side up as well so let's go ahead and cut out the back of our tail and um the way I color is a little messy, so I tend to get crayon marks all over my desk. So if you're somebody who colors like me, um, it'd be a good idea to put it down a tablecloth. So then that way you don't get your table all uh, marked up. Um, I'm going to clean it up later, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. But that might be a good idea, you know, or if you're using watercolors or markers or something like that to color. Um, putting down a tablecloth is a really good idea because then it keeps your surface clean and it doesn't have to be a tablecloth It could be old newspaper as well. So um, keep that in mind in terms of mess All right, so there we go. We have all that done Now we're gonna go ahead and uh, glue its little um skunk line down it's a little bit longer than my um puppet head so it's okay i'm going to cut it a little bit so that way it doesn't go over and just like so we're going to glue it in the middle so we're going to get our glue stick put in some glue make sure you have enough so that it does not come off so we want a nice generous thick layer of glue to keep our um, stripe from coming off its head i'm going to go ahead and glue it this way right about center and then we're gonna put its eyes on mine are like stickers so I just need to take the back off um, if yours are not stickers then go ahead and glue those on so I'm gonna put one eye over here and then I'm gonna do the other one uh, 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 there we go I'll do the other one right there and then I'm going to glue my little black pom-pom nose and I'm going to make sure I put glue on the pom-pom not the paper bag because otherwise it's not going to stick I figured out that if you put glue directly on the pom-pom it sticks way better than if you put it on the bag so we we'll want to make sure we have a nice thick generous layer on there to keep it from falling off and we're gonna go ahead and stick that right there Put a lot of pressure so that it doesn't roll off and then I'm going to glue the top stripe onto my tail I'm gonna flip that see I tried to do it like this and then I'm like oh I don't want lines but then oh that doesn't work so I'll flip my tail as well and that way I can glue it just like that I'm gonna go ahead and put glue on my white stripe with the dark lines facing down or in this case facing up because they're gonna face down once I glue my tail on so I'm gonna glue this piece onto the tail and move it to center it there we go and then I'm going to put glue on the edge of the tail to glue it onto my puppet. Again, we're going to make sure we put a nice generous coat of glue so our tail does not fall off. I'm going to go ahead and right about so. And put nice pressure on there so that it doesn't come off. And it'll look just like that. All right, and then finally is our ears. I'm gonna put some glue on the edge of my ears. Nice, thin, but thick line, thin line, but thick layer of glue on the ears. I'll do one over here. I'll do the other one. thin line but thick layer of glue just like so and I'll put it over on this side just like so Oop, it slid off 
Um, there we go. Make sure they're even. Just like so. Alright. So here is my skunk puppet. Yours should look like this, similar. Unless you change the color, but something along these lines. And you can put your hand in. And you can talk. You can even draw a mouth under here. Instead of drawing it black, you can draw a mouth under here too if you like. Okay. So this is what your skunk puppet will look like. Similar to. If you enjoyed this craft, please give it a thumbs up. The video. Um, hit the bell notification on our channel. Uh, to let you know when we upload our next video. And that could be a bilingual, that could be a Spanish, that could be a craft, that could be a toddler, that could be a rock and roll reading. Um, so if you're interested in knowing when we upload next, hit all not notifications. And um, I hope you enjoyed this craft. I hope you guys stay safe. And I will see you guys all next week. Bye!